don't back away Come on, on Ben Why can't I be? Hi everybody, this is really, this is all spontaneous, it's not a rehearsed thing and, You know, I had this idea and it, and it seemed to work and uh, it's, it's different so, uh, but the great thing is you get to know a little bit of Linda, and if you're, you know, ADD, you get to listen and then watch me <laughs> chasing pain around the canvas. So uh, I'm going to start just by doing that. I'll give you a little background about how I got started. The thing about this, the, the gestalt about this, the, the feeling of doing this, the willingness to do this, come out and be um, present right now, not have rehearsed this, but just to be willing to tell our stories um, is a very vulnerable thing. And there's no script here. There's just us coming on with um, our nervousness, coming on with our, our, our hope, with our sensibilities to uh, give the gift that we uh, want to give and hope it's enough. Hope that we are enough. I was uh, born uh, nine years after my sister, uh, and we are the, just the two of us. Um, and so it was part of my childhood was to, was to perform. It was a daily thing, and I loved it. And uh, we didn't wash a dish in the house, my mother and sister and I, without doing three-part harmony. <laughs> there was always music, always. To be able to go out and, and do a, a play and make people laugh came naturally to me. And doing this is, was one of them. You know, this was a lark. We did this, as Steve says, we did this because some people in, uh, in an adult education course at the University of North Carolina in Wilmington asked us to do something and said, would you get dressed up as George and Martha Washington? And I thought, no. <laughs> and more and deeper each time uh, for me and I and I, what I see and what you do is, is, is deeper and freer too I've heard this and I believe it's true that no matter what your home of origin is like no matter what the pressures are or the pain or the sadness or the uh, complications or the chaos if there's someone in your life just one person <coughs> who has reached out to you and seen you as you are and accepted you as you are, you are saved. And that happened for me. So let's, let's fast forward uh, from college. Did you, what did you think of your senior year? Where did you imagine yourself being? Well, as opposed to where you ended up. But I mean, sure. did you have a real clear plan as far as I've never had a plan. I still know. I have hope, and I had um, I had a dream, and that was to be on stage and to sing and to act and to dance. I did anything and everything I could that wasn't morally reprehensible. <laughs> I got my first job in the Broadway musical in the chorus. And they fired the director in Philadelphia, and they brought in Hal Prince. <laughs> and I remember where I was when he came into the theater, and uh, he believed in me. And that's what you need, someone who believes in you. So, uh, All right, well, let's get to the story. Well, it, I went back and forth to California, and I did got some little jobs in television. I was on Rhoda. I was on Valerie's show. So at the end of 1973-74, they had seen me in this little pilot at Warner Brothers. And they said, the head of Warner Brothers Television came into my dressing room the night we were shooting this little pilot television show and said, we want to put you in a contract. And I couldn't believe it. It had been such a terrible year of not getting any attention or a job and finally I had this tiny job and the guy that runs the company comes in and says we want to we want to make you a star and I said very gracious of me sure <laughs> I thought he was kidding I couldn't believe it and so they put me under contract 
adapted two years later, a script called Alice Doesn't Live Here Anymore was sitting on a shelf. And the man who was head of casting at the time became the head of Warner Brothers Television. He's still a good friend. His name is Alan Shane. He looked up and he said, why haven't we done anything with this show called Alice? It's been sitting here for two years on my shelf. And he called a guy at CBS. And the CBS guy said, we can't find an actress who sings. And Alice said, we've had her under contract for two years. And that's how I got Alice. <laughs> he looked up, you know, <laughs> look up. And, uh, and that changed my life. All right, well, let's fast forward. Because we know it ran for nine years. Uh, and when you knew it was coming to a close, you know, was there a fear or you know, concern about what's next, or did you feel so on top of it that you were so successful? I mean, I'm sure wherever you went, people were like, oh my God, you're Aladdin, you're Alice, you're, you know. So was there a sense that, of course, I'll be able to work after this, or not? You know, that's something that other people assume the way other people assume that we've all planned our career every step of it. I have a friend who said to me once, you've planned your career so well. And I said, you know, I've not planned a step of my career. That's not the way life works for me. I've done what felt right. I've taken chances. I've jumped off uh, one plateau to another. Sometimes I didn't make it. Sometimes I swam what was below me get to the next plateau. I've been as much in the moment as I could be, but I've not planned a career, nor have I planned a life. There's a wonderful, wonderful piece of writing that is available uh, that Martha Graham wrote or said. And one of the things that she said to Agnes DeMille is, an artist is never satisfied. An artist is never going to be self-satisfied, okay, I did it, I'm done, I'm, oh, well, that was the, that was great. That's not to say that I didn't enjoy the show that I did Saturday night. I loved that show, and I think we did a, a great job, and the audience was wonderful, and we had a fabulous time. Um, there were moments where I know I, uh, there are still things I want to do better. There are things I want to change. Hopefully, we, as artists, we deconstruct. That's what you're doing right now. You're deconstructing as you as you paint this portrait. You tear everything down in order to find the truth underneath it. There is no one way of doing anything. And that means I'm free because I'm willing to grow. I'm willing to say, and I truly believe this, what other people think of me is none of my business. <laughs> that doesn't mean I don't care what you think, or that I hope you had a good time. I hope you had a good time. I hope you're having a good time. But I cannot be responsible for everybody's reactions to me. I can only show up and give my truth. And that makes me so happy to know that. It frees me to do the best that I can right now, right here, and then know that tomorrow I can do something else. But I only have this moment right now. And that feels so good. And so there's no satisfaction beyond the peace of knowing that I have no answers, just hope and questions and willingness to show up. Don't